everyone, welcome back to the Lord of the Rings Online. We've got our fine young hobbit, Narlo, here. And when we left off, we were over here by the little pond at the water. And we had just finished talking to Misty Bolger, the fishing supplier. Finishing the one fish, two fish quest. And we are going to go do the crafting quest now at Michael Delvin. To do that, we are going to head off in this direction and make a side trip through Bywater right quick. Just to show you all the little village. And we're back on the Bywater Hobbiton Road. And right up here we have the little town of Bywater. As you see, it's kind of a... Uh, Almost like a farmer's market type place. We've got a cook over here with an oven. You see various little merchants scattered about. Weapon crafters, weapon traders. And to be such a peaceful place, armor crafters. Be such a peaceful place. The uh, Shire does seem to have an overabundance of armor and armor smiths and weapon smiths. And down here, of course, the one of the most famous places in all of the Shire, the Green Dragon Inn. All right. So, at this point, we're gonna head back to Michael Delving. We're sitting here in Bywater. We're going to follow the road all the way back, go back through Waymeet, which if you remember is the trailer park of the Shire, and head back into Michael Delvin. So, back up to the main road. And as y'all may remember from reading the novels. This right here is the East Road that goes through the Shire from one end to the other. And it's actually remnant, the remnant of the Great East Road that stretches from the Grey Havens all the way over there in the east. It goes this way. It goes through Bree. It goes um, past the Misty Mountains. goes through um... Mirkwood and finally ends up all the way over in the uh, swamps to the south of the Lonely Mountain and um, Lake Town. So this is a very historical noted, noted road to uh, happen to be traveling along. But we are just going to take it back to Michael Delving for the moment. And just enjoy the Shire as we go along. An intersection here. As you see, this leads back down to Hobbiton and eventually on up past the party field and up to Bag End. And if you go back this way, it leads over this little hill and will take you to Tuckboro and the home of the Tooks. And we'll definitely be heading that way in a little while. We have the quest that Lobelia sent us on to see if she can get fireworks for her birthday party. Because she can't allow a simple Baggins to outdo her. But... We will be traveling to Tookboro in a little while. First, we're going to do our little trip here to Michael Delving and see what crafting is all about. Now, there are various crafting professions that you can take on um, that are related to... There's the scholar profession, the scholar... I believe it's called, who uh, mostly is involved in making things like potions, um, 
You have the armsman, who is basically your weaponsmith. You have the metalsmith, who is your armor maker. Um, there's the... Is it the forester, who has the wood crafting, in which case he makes things like bows and sta uh, staves, rods, those sort of things. So there's a number of different things. You have your farmer, who of course works with farming. Um, your cooking profession. And I'm thinking at the moment that I may simply choose, there's the, uh, I think, explorer profession. And if I remember correctly, mostly it's a gatherer. You are able to gather the any of the the branches that you come across as you gain levels you're able to gather up any of the ore nodes that you come across as you gain levels and I'm wanting to say you're also able to either farm or cook each one of the little professions has three um, abilities like that right here you see this side of Michael Delving which we haven't been to yet You've got the auction hall here. Um, it's a player-driven auction hall. You go in and you place bids for uh, items that you want to try and purchase, or you can put up items to sell for yourself. Next over, you have the vendor hall, which is basically just a room with a bunch of merchants inside of it that you can use to sell back your vendor trash. And then over here, the training hall, where all the various uh, trainers for burglar trainers and guardian trainers and hunter trainers and all those. Anytime you gain a level and need to learn new skills, that's where you'll travel. In fact, since we've gained up to level 8 and haven't trained yet, let's go in and see if there's anything, any new skills that we can pick up. Okay, we're going to look for a burglar trainer. There we go. And whatever your trainer is, will always have a little icon over their head. See, this has got the burglar icon. You notice none of the others have an icon over their head, meaning basically that we can't use them. So let's see what the burglar trainer has to say. Hello we're there. Try skills. Do we have any passive skills? Um, parry. So let's go ahead and train up in parry. That will help our uh, defensive capabilities. Yeah. And then we have active skills. Touch and go. Says you can improve your ability to evade your enemy's attacks for a short time. Using this skill will not break stealth. So as you see it gives plus 50% to your evade chances. And you can use it while you're in stealth. So that's a very, very useful skill to have. Go ahead and train that up. And then we have Riddle. Riddle is a uh, skill you're capable of posing riddles to your enemies, which may momentarily distract them, dazing them for a short time or until damage. This will not work on beasts, insects, or creatures of nature. So basically, if it's a thinking creature... Anything that's sentient with a brain, like a orc or a goblin or a human or anything of that sort, you can pose a riddle to them which will daze them. Basically, think of it as a mesmerize spell. It's a kind of a crowd control. Gives them a daze. So we will go ahead and train that as well. And there we are down here with our new spell. And there's our touch and go. And I am going to move the health potions up to the next level. Get those out of the way. What's this? This is the Horn of Disruption. Ah, uh, that's one of our little items that we picked up along with the uh, horse whistle. So I'm going to move it up here. All right. So good. We've got our new skills. And let's go over here and talk to the crafting trainer. All right, we need to talk to Emerald Borings. Before we do that, let's also run over here. And let's visit the stable, if we haven't already. I don't believe that we have. 
This is the Michael Delving Stable. Okay, we do have this one. So it's already here. And that's right. This is one of the main starting towns. And if I remember correctly, you already automatically have the four starting towns. Um, which for hobbits, of course, is Michael Delvin. For humans, is over in Bree. For dwarves, is Thorin's Hall. And the Blue Mountains, the Arid Luin. And for elves, is, I believe, Dualond. Which is also over in the Blue Mountains. You should always start off if I'm remembering correctly, with those four um, staples. Here we have Emerald Borings. Right up here is the Michael Delving Craft Fair, as they call it. And all your various crafting professions and all will be right up here um, with trainers and with uh, merchants to sell you the materials. Let's talk to Emerald right quick. A lovely day, isn't it? Alf sent you to me? Good, good. We need more good folk with an interest in making useful and pretty things. Speak with the Mistress of Apprentices, and she can help you choose a vocation in which to specialize. A vocation is a bundle of three crafting professions with overlapping skills. Choose your vocation with care because you will expend a great deal of time and energy improving your skill with the professions under its purview. Once the Mistress of Apprentices Apprentices has welcomed you to your chosen vocation. Be sure to speak with a supplier who can sell you the tools of your trade. Every profession has its own tools, so be not over shy with your coin purse. The novices will be happy to sell you any recipes you might wish to have, though I can tell you now that you already know how to make a thing or two. Equip the crafting tools you plan on using and find an appropriate facility. Michael Delving has a forge, workbench, and oven available for your use and begin practicing your skill. You will advance in your chosen professions as you practice and seek out the teachings of others in the field. I hope you will become a skilled craftsman, Narlo, and that it will bring profit to you in the Shire. I will give you a few coins to get you started. Use them wisely and consider them an investment in your future as a skilled craftsman. There we go. Got some coins and a little bit of experience as well, just to touch, to bring us on up. Now we need to find the Mistress of Apprentices. Yes, Mistress. No Mistress. I don't think she's that kind of a Mistress. Uh, no. She's a gray-haired old gammer, so I don't think she's that kind of Mistress at all. Let's speak with the Mistress. Are you looking to join a vocation? And there's your various vocations. You got your armorer, who is your metalsmith. That's the one he makes armor. The prospector, that's the skill that allows you to mine the nodes of uh, copper and that sort of thing. And there's my phone, I will pause it here. Hello everybody, and I'm back. Um, sorry about the interruption of the phone call there. Had to go help the wife with a few things, and as you see, it's been long enough that dusk is actually settling on the Shire now, so... what well, we were talking to Blossom Proudfoot here, the Mistress of Apprentices. And we were going through the different vocations. We had the Metalsmith, like I said, it's the Armor Maker. The Prospector, who is the guy that digs up the various uh, ore nodes, like copper and iron and barrow iron. And Tailor, the Tailor is the profession that makes cloth armor. Um, you have the Explorer, which has a tailor. Forester, who is the one who harvests the branch nodes that you saw earlier. And the Prospector, who harvests the, the, uh, the metal nodes. You have the Armsman. He is the Weaponsmith, has Prospector, and Woodworker. Woodworker is the one that makes bows and things. You have Tinker who comes with a jeweler, which is a good profession to have. It allows you to make the various items in the game, like rings and necklaces and bracelets and things that give you stat bonuses. The prospector and a cook. And the cook is where you make your different kinds of food that help heal you and give you bonuses in battle. You have the yeoman, which gives you the cook, the farmer, and the tailor. Woodsman, which gives you the woodworker, the forester, and the farmer. And the historian, the scholar, which allows you to make scrolls. 
weaponsmith and the farmer said I think I am gonna go with Explorer on my main characters I have pretty much all the other uh, professions um, accounted for and Explorer is a good one to have um, it's a good one for making money number one because you can collect the various um, wood and metal nodes and then sell them at the auction house to people who are trying to level up their skills and it also gives you the tailor skill which being a burglar and only being able to use uh, light armor uh, the tailor will allow me to pretty much make the uh, the tailored armor that my class will be able Just to use. A moment. So, she says, an explorer can live off the land crafting leather armor and clothing while gathering any resources they come across. Explorer is an excellent choice for anyone who wears light or medium armor or wants to specialize in resource gathering. Do you want to learn this trade? So we'll go ahead and train it. Now you can trade professions, like if I got tired of being a, uh, an explorer, I could switch to armor smith. But the problem with that is, is that you lose all the experience in whatever profession that you start with and have to start all over again at the bottom. So it's pretty important that whatever you choose is what you want to do. So we're going to go with that. Okay. So it says the trainer, you've gained a craft vocation, allow you to perform three different professions. The trainer is giving you some starter tools and a handy guide to explain more about how to advance. There you go. And yes, the trainer tools here. You see you have a inferior prospector's tools. You have inferior forester's axe and inferior tailor's tools and yes all of them are pretty crappy it doesn't take long before you wear them out and they break and you have to repair them so it is best if you upgrade them as soon as possible she's got another ring over her head let us see what she's got all right looking to learn a profession here's the quest introduction to forestry might i speak with you a moment Collecting wood and refining it or tanning and curing hides is a necessity. Without any folk who did this, how would woodworkers or tailors be able to make their wares? You will want to speak with Marigold Grub, the supplier here. She has volunteered her time and energy to teach the new apprentices. Mine her well. So we're going to speak with Marigold. And let's grab the other two, which I bet will also be speaking to Marigold. You got introduction to prospecting. With you? Yep, it's about speaking to Marigold again about the metalworking. So we'll talk to her again. An introduction to Taylor. Might I speak with you a moment? Is speak to Halfred. You will want to speak to Halfred Bolger over near the workbench. So that gives us three real easy quests to pick up right quick. Here is Marigold. We will quickly speak to her. What do you need? All right. Well, look here, another would-be forester. I'm pleased to meet you, and I'm looking forward to helping you get started. If I go too fast or you need help, you can always ask me questions about forestry, and I will do my best to provide you with direction. All right, the first thing is to have the proper ingredients. All right. Take this crate and let us begin. So we're going to continue the quest, and she's going to give us a crate that has some supplies inside of it. We've been given a crate now. All the ingredients necessary to craft a piece of light leather and a plank of treated rowan. So this is nice. This is something they didn't have in the original game when it first came out. You um, were given your profession. You talked to the mistress and given your profession. And then you had a guide that you had to read and it would tell you. It's one of these here, I'm sure. There you go. See? It gives you a guide that tells you how to do the various crafts and stuff. And you basically had to read it and then kind of on your own after that. Go to the supplier, get the materials that you needed, and start working on your trade. Um, it looks like now they actually give you, as you see, a little crate with some beginner supplies in it. And then kind of walk you through doing it. So we're going to call that an episode right there. 
and when we come back we'll run through the various trade stuff right quick and see how that works and travel on and finish up some more quests so I'll see you next time and thank you for watching